Hi, and welcome back to In My Mama's Kitchen. I'm Jeff, and this is... Mama. Oh, you want me to talk? Sure. <laughs> well, Jeff and I have been binge-watching the Great British Bake Off with uh, Mary Berry, Paul Hollywood, Prue Leith, and it's, it's great for anybody that wants to cook and, and, and enjoys baking. Now, we, we do a lot of cooking. We don't do baking unless it's, you know, something that you have a recipe and you follow it. Box. Yeah, mostly comes from a box. Now, we did make uh, lemon tarts the other day um, off of um, Mary Berry's recipe, yes. and it, they were great. Oh, oh they were delicious. We'll, so We'll but, be making those again and filming it. Yeah, we will. So today we decided to do something extremely difficult, and that is we're going to tackle making macarons. And it's not macaroons. Macaroons are coconut cookies. Macarons are the little cookies that sandwich with the buttercream frosting or ganache or lemon curd in the middle, and they're, they're simply incredible. They're almond cookies, they're gluten-free, mm -hmm. and they're um, pretty difficult to make from what I understand. So we're going to try it. If it goes wrong, you'll know what we did wrong as well as we do, and we'll try again. Because the whole thing about baking is you have to get in and get started. You can't, you know, just become a great baker overnight. You're going to you, make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things wrong. Even though I've got a recipe to follow, I've, I've watched videos, done my research, but who knows? It's kind of humid. Who knows if that's going to make a difference in it or not. But we're going to go for it. We're going to try. So here's what we have. We have almond flour. We have confectioner's sugar. Powdered sugar. Powdered sugar. We have three egg whites three eggs, the egg whites, that we have let age in the refrigerator refrigerator for a couple of days. And those are going to go, that's going to make the meringue. We have uh, caster sugar, which is fine, finely ground sugar, it's, uh, finer than uh, granulated sugar, and it's very expensive too, so I hope we don't mess this up. A lot of recipes you get from England and France call for caster sugar. I always thought it was just granulated sugar. This is the, their word for it. That We thought that was their word for it. It's not. It's actually, it's between confectioner sugar and granulated sugar. It's yeah. its own grade. And it's like four ninety nine a pound. So, yeah, yeah, it's expensive. But, you know, the British um, call biscuits scones, and they call cookies biscuits. So we just figured caster sugar was another of their terms, but it isn't. It's, it's really, really fine sugar. And we'll show you this before we put it in. I mean, it's, it's almost like powdered sugar, just a little bit. A little bit less fine than powdered sugar. A little grainier. Yeah. So we're going to get started, and we'll explain what we're doing as we go along, and uh, hope for the best. Now, I do want to add, uh, we've, like Mom said, we've done a lot of research. Professional bakers will have, I mean, there's one lady, she made literally hundreds upon hundreds yeah. of macarons, and she showed the ones that she messed up. So, you know, professionals mess up, so we're going to mess up. And here's the thing, it's Hopefully like not. like the lady said, even if you mess them up and they don't turn out perfectly, they're still going to be delicious. And you can uh, take the ones that mess up and keep them in a box. You can refrigerate these and keep them, and then that way you can make them up in advance and then take them out like the day of your uh, soiree, party, whatever, and let them come to room temperature. And they'll be just as good as if you had just baked them. Actually, when you bake them, when you get all the way done, you have to put them in the fridge for like 24 hours. So... Yeah, so we'll make lemon tarts and try to sell those over <laughs> yeah. macarons, right? Yeah, we will. Now, this is an intensive process. It's not mix, 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 bake, done. No. So we're going to go through the steps as best we can, and you know, thanks for sticking with us. Yep. And here we go. All right. Um, I was going to get my phone here and explain to you what we're doing. The uh, We have... 220 grams of powdered sugar, which is one and three quarter cups, and we, we have a, um, a scale and that weighs in grams, and this is so precise that we weighed everything in grams rather than one and three quarter cups. When you get one and three quarter cups, it could be a little bit more, a little bit less than three quarters, you know, when you're me measuring it out. So we have a little scale that measures in, you know, pounds and grams, and we've measured everything in grams. We have um, one cup or 95 grams of almond flour, three large egg whites. We have a quarter teaspoon of tartar, cream of tartar, and with a pinch of salt. Then we have a quarter cup, which is 25 grams of super fine sugar, gel food coloring, you don't use liquid, 
it messes the whole up thing up. And you just use a couple of drops of that. And then a half a teaspoon of <laughs> vanilla. And then that's, that's what you do. So first thing we're gonna do is whisk the powdered sugar with the almond flour. I need the whisk, please. So we're gonna put that over here. We're gonna whisk this in. There goes the powdered sugar and the... And with powdered sugar, stir slowly, because otherwise you'll have a cloud of powdered sugar dust. Yes, you will. And what we're gonna do is just stir this up, combine the two, and then we're gonna put it through a sieve because, and sift it, because we don't want, you want it to be as fine as possible. No clumps. No big pieces. There you go. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do it that way? I was gonna do it, have you do it right here. Okay. Um, now we've got two pieces of parchment here. The first one, we'll sieve it over onto this one. Then we'll pick it up and run it through the sieve again. You want to do that? You want to stand right here and do it so you've got a good... Yes. Side yes, side. I appreciate that. Right. Well, I've got... This, uh -uh. Everything has to have been... Oh, okay. Yeah, the first thing you want to do is clean everything that you're going to use um, with either vinegar or lemon juice. We use lemon juice uh, because you don't want any oils or any um, soap, any residue to get through and ruin your, ruin your dish. So this is gonna take a while. We'll, we'll be back. You? No, they don't need to watch us do this, dude. That's a pretty fine sieve. Yeah. Okay, you do it. Wash my hands again. Oh, you're so much better at it than I am. Yeah, oh, see, look at all the big pieces there. Yeah, this aerates it. Uh huh. The thing about meringue is you want it to be um, you want it to be airy light and, and light and fluffy and glossy. And we'll when we get to that stage of mixing the egg whites, we'll we will we'll tell you about that and how we've watched several videos last hours night. Upon <laughs> hours upon hours. And I've read through so many um, recipes. And the funny thing is, there's different recipes. Depending on who you're looking at, you know. Some will call for two egg whites, some for three. Some call for cream of tartar, some don't. But one I watched last night said the cream of tartar helps stabilize the meringue. So we chose to use that one. Go ahead and just put that in with this. And why don't we take a break, let them take a break, and then we'll come back when we're all done. I can do that. I can edit it. Okay. I just don't want... I, my hands are clean and I don't want to... Yeah. Now, I seem to remember Paul Hollywood saying, especially with bread, he is the king of, of making bread, that when you leave the little bits out, you need to add some more in to make sure you, you're... Yes, but what we're going to do is I'm going to put this back in the food processor mm. and grind this up. They didn't do that. But if we put other bits in, we're going to have to sieve them as well and have the same problem. Yeah. So that you know. Well, yeah, but then we can weigh it to make sure we have the exact amount. Make it just right in there? Yeah. Just want to make sure we get every exactly. bit. Baking is an exact science. It's it not is. like cooking where you can, oh, I think I'll throw this in and see what happens. No, that's the thing about it. It is, it is science. It is math. It is science. And I didn't do, well, I did okay in math. I didn't do that great in science, but it is. Or as they say over there, maths. Maths. Oh, no, we have to use maths. It's got an S. It has an S to it, yeah. Hey, y'all, um, in case you haven't watched it, there's like, eight or nine seasons of the Great British Bake Off. 11. Well, 11. The new one starts this coming week. And, oh my gosh, we are super excited about that. Never wanted desserts more in my life. It does make you hungry. It does. We'll be watching, like, especially on a cake episode. I'll look at mom and like, I'm going to Target cake. <laughs> now it's like, hey, let's make some lemon tarts. 
hey, let's make macarons because they had this one episode and they were, made all these beautiful macarons. And I was like, oh, I want to I learn how to do that. So basically, that's what this is. This is our initial attempt and um, trial. I know what I can do is weigh this and see how much more I need. Well, no, you don't really need more. Huh? You don't really need more. We just need to grind that until we find it. If we get more, we'll just have to grind it again. Well, it's not even showing any. And we don't know how much is sugar and how much is... Yeah, that's true. We don't. Okay. It wasn't even showing up on the weight. Yeah. Yeah, so you can use your um, food processor. Pardon? Oh. Yeah. So there, there are various stages of making macarons, and each stage is important. And if you skip or rush or don't do them properly, um, then that can make your macarons fail. Yep. I get every bit. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sift it again? Yes. Hold on, let me get the rest of this right here. Okay. That's about as good as that's going to get. I'm just trying to force it through the sieve. Yeah, gently. but they said not to do that. Well, I'm breaking it up as I do it. I know. Because otherwise we got a good ounce. Okay, go ahead. They just said to discard the, the big bits. Yeah, I know, but so much. Well, let's see. Here. Put that on the scale. Then, but you don't know how much is. I was going to say, if you put that on the scale and then weigh yeah. this and find out how much we're actually missing. Yeah, but you don't know what's, how much is oh, flour yes. and how yeah. much is what. See, baking is fun. I know. I messed up. Go off. <laughs> uh, you have to be smarter than the scale. <laughs> I've thought that my whole life. <laughs> okay, here we go. Turn that on. It's not even going to register, I don't think. Five grams. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to make that big of a difference. I don't either. Because um, the one we watched last night, she discarded what mm -hmm. didn't go through. Now, the reason we've got double parchment is because the bowl's leaking. We're now going to sift it into the bowl. Well, no, we're going to. Well, what she did was she sifted it onto the parchment a second time, and she said possibly even a third time. Yeah, depending how fine it gets. Whoa. Now what you gonna do? Watch. Okay, here you go. Actually, we sift it in the bowl now. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's why I didn't understand why she was using the the partridge car. Because she's a professional baker. That's true. She knows what she's doing. We don't. We are learning together. So, yeah. Fingers crossed. Boy, it's so fun, it doesn't want to go through now. Right? It is. I just overfilled it like a dumbass. I'm going to pour some back on here. But you got the partridge. The partridge? Does it come with the pear tree? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that paper. That's what you got the paper for. Parchment, not partridge. That is so fine looking. That's beautiful. 
Think we need to do it three times? I don't know. Uh, probably not. It looks pretty fine. She said two is sufficient. Yeah. Three only if you absolutely have to. Yeah. And this is actually putting a lot of air in here. Mm-hmm. What you want? You want your meringue to be light and fluffy. Now, I do have to say, um, last time we were doing the banana pudding, mm -hmm. and you said something about putting meringue, and I said, I don't like meringue. I have to stand corrected because this, <laughs> this is meringue. These cookies are almond. They're made out of almond flour and egg whites whipped into a meringue. But it's not just straight meringue. No, it's, it's absolutely delicious. Now, we've never had macarons before. And uh, the other day we had to take Princess Thelma in to get her hair did. Yes. And um, <coughs> excuse me. And down the street was a gelato shop, and next to it was a macaron shop. And we stopped in and we got them. And they're expensive. Yeah. It was six for fifteen dollars. Six, six about that size. Well, yeah, well, about average macaron size. Yeah. And we got fifteen dollars. Strawberry. Milk yeah. chocolate, cinnamon roll, birthday cake. Birthday cake and um, Oreo cookie, Oreo I think. Oreo cookie. Mm -hmm. The two best were the lemon and the milk chocolate. Yeah. So we are making lemon. They were, oh, my gosh. Oh. Duh. And the next time we'll make milk chocolate because I like milk chocolate. Yeah, we can make, we could actually do half and half if we had all the stuff. But we don't. We don't. And you have to put cocoa in this part. Yes, I know. That's what I'm saying. You could do half and then. Or we'll just make those next time. How's that? Do you want me to? Well, what it's doing is it's clumping up. Uh-huh. So this is just breaking it up. Okay. And yes, my hands are clean. You only washed them about four times since we started prepping. And this is a situation where your mise en place actually is imperative. It's not just, oh, yeah, I need to get everything out. You've got to have it all. You right. have to have everything together. Because it's timing. Would you pour that other leftover in here? See what I can get through. Okay. Please, thank you. You're welcome. I'm so bossy. Can't imagine where you got it from. From whence it came. <laughs> I'm not bossy. It's authoritative. <laughs> There's a difference, you know. There is. This takes a lot longer than I thought. Yes, it does. Well, I guess um, when we're watching the videos, they kind of cut. They cut and edit and go through. And we're going to do that, too. So y'all don't just sit here and go. So we might be talking and saying stuff that you'll never hear. That's true, because he's going to edit it out. It's like the part about me being bossy. He won't edit that part out, I can guarantee you. That's gold. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. I think that's all we're gonna get. All right. It's probably another that's about the five grams, amount. yeah. Okay. Cool. So you think we're done with that? We're done with that. What next, McGuff? Okay. Oh, what next? Uh, okay, with some powdered sugar with the almond, then sift through a fine mesh sieve into a bowl. Okay. Discard any coarse almond. Okay, beat the egg whites. All right. Now so to we're the egg whites. Beat the egg whites, we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to start with the egg whites, and we have three egg whites that have been, well, when, you can look up how to age egg whites, but basically you put them in the bowl, you put a uh, saran wrap over them, and then you poke holes in it, and you let them sit for uh, at least 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Then when you're ready to make your macarons, you take it out and let it come to room temperature about 30 minutes. It's been actually about an hour since we did took them out, so... We're going to pour the egg whites in. Make sure your bowl is impeccably clean. Yes, and I already cleaned it with uh, lemon juice. So we're going to lock it. Lock it and then turn it on low. Low. And let it get kind of frothy. It says medium. Yeah, medium speed. Because this is going to take a while. Not too long. Well, this, you want this to get frothy. 
and then you want to add the salt and the cream of tartar. Let's see, this right here. Pardon me. I'm trying to be Steven Spielberg here, woman. Well, I'm sorry, but I got to get this stuff in here. And it's so humid, it's sticking to the bowl. Humid is only Texas. Okay, so it says to do that. And it's frothy. You want to look in there and see? See, it's frothy. Oh. See how frothy it is? Okay. Now we're going to beat them on high for five minutes and adding the um, sugar. sugar, medium high. Okay. And we're going to gradually add the sugar. Just, Don't do it all at once. Uh, no. It'll take all the air out and your meringue won't work. This is the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> now I have made, last, last Christmas I made uh, Christmas cookies and I made royal icing and I made meringue and I did it with just a hand mixer. And let me tell you, your hand and arm gets pretty tired. Aren't you glad I brought this in? Yes. Okay, that's all of the sugar. Okay, this is going to take about five minutes. It's very loud. But you have to beat it into a stiff peak, and I'll show you the difference between a medium soft peak and what a stiff peak is. They have to be fully stiff peak before you can make macarons. So we'll be back. All right, we're just going to check them here and see. Okay, see how it folds Oops, over? It helps I had it in shot. Yeah. See how it folds over? That's a soft peak, a medium peak. Um, so that's not what you want yet, so you want to keep on going. Got it? Mm -hmm. So we're going to, here we go. Where's the lock? There we go. And here we go. Again. Exactly. Those are some stiff peaks. I don't know. Oops. Oh, okay. Okay, hold on. It's not quite. It's almost there. Well, it's pretty close. Yeah. She said you also don't want to over meet it. I mean, that peak is not moving. Well, I know, but, you know, you want to turn it over and see if it'll fall out. Yeah, this is the test. <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm afraid it's not quite there yet. Like almost. I just think it needs a couple, maybe another minute or so. You don't want to overdo it because then you get, um, you can ruin your, your meringues that way too. I think it's just almost there. Lock and load. See, it doesn't... That is stiffy. I don't know. I, I think it is. That looks pretty good. Yeah. But the problem is, if you don't have it in stiff peaks, it won't. That, well, she said, when you turn it over your head. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do it. If I get a head full of meringue. Okay, you're good. I'm good. Okay, we have stiff peaks. Okay. And you see them do that on Great British Bake Off. So <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> we're not just being stupid here. No. That's right. what they do. Okay, and now. Right back to the next step. All right, so what are you doing now? Now I'm going to add some food coloring. Make sure I got the right one. 
This says lemon yellow. And so we're just going to add. Scrape it on the blade. Yeah. Is that too thick? Yes, please. Because <laughs> it doesn't want to come out of this. Because this... it's a gel. That's true. This is a, what's called a smidgen. I've got these little ones that smidgen, a pinch, a dash, and a tad. So I'm using the smidge. I probably should have used a tad. Thank you. But the reason you don't use a liquid food coloring is to make your... It changes the... Texture and make yes. it fall. Changes the complexion. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, boy. That ought to be plenty. We shall see. So I'm just going to turn this back in here, lock it, and just very gently whip it until it turns pretty yellow. Crank it up a little bit because the stuff in the center of the... Well, I can do the rest with a whisk. Okay, we'll be right back.